or how to decide where to put the resources in a society. Leonid Vitalievich Kantorovich was born in St. Petersburg, Russian Empire, on January 19, 1912. He died on April 7, 1986, in Moscow, Soviet Union. He was born to a Russian Jewish family. His father was a doctor practicing in St. Petersburg. In 1926, Kantorovich enrolled in Leningrad State University at the age of 14 and graduated at the age of being just 18. He graduated from the Faculty of Mathematics and Mechanics in 1930 and began his graduate studies. In 1934, at the age of 22 years, he became a full professor. He first began delving into the more abstract fields of mathematics during his second year of university. He noted that his most significant research during that time period centered around the analytical operations on sets and on projective sets as well as solving NN losing problems. Kantorovich went on to report his findings to the first Old Union Mathematical Congress in Kharkov, Russia, in 1930. He became a full professor in 1934 and received his doctoral degree in 1935 while working at Leningrad University and at the Institute of Industrial Construction Engineering. Kantorovich later went on to work as the director of mathematical economic methods at the Siberian Division of the Soviet Academy of Sciences and as the head of the research laboratory at the Institute of National Economic Management in Moscow. He also received the Order of Lenin in 1967. I want to share three statements Kantorovich produced which seem to me to be very, very important to understand his work. Quote, the counting methods based on mathematical models, the use of computers for computation and information data processing make up only one part of the control mechanism. Another part is the control structure. End of quote. Quote, in planning the idea of decentralization must be connected with routines of linking plans of rather autonomous parts of the whole system. Here, one can use a conditional separation of the system by means of fixing values of flows and parameters transmitted from one part to another. One can use an idea of sequential recomputation of the parameters, which was successfully developed by many authors for the scheme of dancing wolf and for aggregative linear models. End of quote. Quote, in our time, mathematics has penetrated into economics so solidly, widely, and variously, and the chosen theme is connected with such a variety of facts and problems that it brings us to cite the words of Kozma Prutkov, which are very popular in our country. One cannot embrace the unembraceable. The appropriateness of this wise sentence is not diminished by the fact that the great thinker is only a pen name. End of quote. Jalen Charles Kupens was born in Gravelin, Netherlands, on August 28, 1910. He died on the 26th of February in 1985 in New Haven, USA. Kupens grew up in the village of Gravelin and began his educational and biblical studies at a school where his father was principal. His early life outside of school leaned heavily on common religious rituals and instruction. At 17, Kupens left for the University of Utrecht. While at the university, he boarded with a family less strict and much more socially lively. He would eventually renounce his ties to the Protestant faith. In his early 20s, Kubans looked to Marxism to make sense of the Great Depression. In an autobiographical sketch, he wrote, It dawned on me that he, the economic world order was unreliable, unstable, and most of all, iniquitous. I sought intellectual contacts and friendship with a group of socialist students and also with a small handful of communist-oriented students and unemployed workers. Thus, Karl Marx's Das Kapital, Volume 1, became to be the first book in economics that I studied. While never accepting the labor theory of value, I was stirred by the famous chapter on the state of the English workers during the Industrial Revolution. He received his magister from the University of Utrecht in 1933 and his PhD degree from the University of Leiden in 1936. Since mathematical economics was not a discipline during those years, his degrees were in mathematics. Kubmans eventually affiliated himself with John Tinbergen, a trained mathematical physicist. Kubmans earned his doctorate 
became an economics professor at the Netherlands School of Economics in Rotterdam between 1936 to 1938, after Tinbergen was called to the League of Nations at Geneva. When Tinbergen returned in 1938, Kuban took his place at the League. He worked for two years in Geneva. He was able to leave the Netherlands for the United States in May June 1940, just as the Nazis invaded the Netherlands. He ended up working for the British Merchant Shipping Mission in Washington, D.C. until 1944. In 1944, he was invited to join the Carlos Commission affiliated with the University of Chicago as a research associate. Subsequently, Kubbins was appointed as the research director of the Carlos Commission in 1948, and he served in that capacity for seven years until 1955. In 1955, the Carlos Commission was moved to Yale University, and Kubbins moved with the commission and was given a faculty appointment as full professor at Yale University where he remained until 1981, when he retired. In 1967, Kubmans became the first Alfred Kauss Professor of Economics. The chair was named after the same person for whom the Kauss Commission was named. He was married to Truus Wenningen on October 1936. The couple had three children, a son, Henry W. Kubmans, and two daughters, Anne K. Frankel and Helen K. Weinert. I want to share three statements Kubmans produced, which seem to me to be very important to understand his work. Quote, While it was long possible and sometimes tempting to, for physicists to deny the usefulness of the molecular hypothesis, we economists have the good luck of being some of the molecules of economic life ourselves and of having the possibility through human contacts to study the behavior of other molecules. End of quote. quote. According to a frequently cited definition, economics is the study of the best use of scarce resources. The definition is incomplete. Second best use of resources and outright wasteful uses have equal claim to attention. They are the other side. End of quote. quote. Econometrics may be defined as the quantitative analysis of actual economic phenomena based on the concurrent development of theory and observation related by appropriate methods of inference, end of quote. Kantorovich himself noted that much of his work coincided with Russia's expanding industrialization. As such, many of his mathematical findings were used to help manage the Soviet economy, which focused on state ownership, collective farming, and industrial manufacturing. The Soviet economy was a planned economy focused on the allocation of resources by the state as opposed to a free market economy where the market determines resource allocation. Linear programming. While consulting with the Soviet government's laboratory of the Plywood Trust, Kantorovich was assigned to devise a method for distributing raw resources to maximize output. As a mathematician, Kantorovich saw the problem as to how to mathematically maximize a linear function subject to many constraints. To solve this problem, he developed a method known as linear programming. Price and Production Theory In his 1939 book, The Mathematical Method of Production Planning and Organization, Kantorovich argued that his mathematics and of constraint optimization could be applied to all problems of economic allocation. Similar insights were developed as part of neoclassical production theory and price theory by economists John Hicks in Britain and Paul Samuelson in the United States. In Kantorovich's models, he showed that the coefficients on certain variables in the equations could be interpreted as input prices to coordinate the allocation of resources. Resource allocation. Kantorovich further developed his theory on the book The Best Uses of Economic Resources. He showed that the implicit relative prices of inputs from this model were critical even in centrally planned economies where no actual markets operated to generate market prices. He also argued that this included the implicit price of time in trade-offs between present and future production and consumption plans, which corresponds to the market interest rate in a capitalist economy. He asserted that planned economies should use interest rates as capitalist economies do. 
For his work in public policy and economic development, he was recognized through numerous awards. Kubman's work during his entire career was concentrated on the issue of the efficient allocation of resources to competing activities, also referred to as the optimal allocation of resources. One of the first practical mathematical algorithms developed was the transportation algorithm, which later was expanded to the more general mathematical allocation model denoted by the term linear programming, which included several variations of the model. During his professional and academic career, Kubmans published and lectured widely. Kubmans was a pioneer in the development of mathematical economics and econometrics. As head of the Kaus Commission from 1948 until 1967, Kubmans presided over a crucial period in the development of new Russian economics, from its roots in the Lausanne School into its modern axiomatized form. His specific contributions were many. Kubmans independently discovered and developed the method of linear programming and activity analysis and applied it to practical and theoretical general equilibrium models, 1951-1957. His three essays, 1957, are a classical theoretical and methodological exposition of neo Russian general equilibrium theory the equivalence of technical efficiency in production and profit maximization was forwarded by Kubmans, 1951, thus leading to his effective involvement in socialist calculation debate. His concern with efficiency led him to rewrite the neoclassical growth model as intertemporal optimization problems, 1965-1967, and his concern with optimality over time were an important phase of his work. Kubmans was also instrumental in developing and popularizing the Kaus approach to econometrics, or simply econometrics as we knew it, before the time series VA approach became popular. In the 1940s, Kubmans became involved in a method in stride with the American institutionalists over the measurement without theory approach to empirical research. In 1977, James Tevin described Kuhnman's discrete disposition like this, quote, Unlike many giants of contemporary economics, Kuhnman's is not widely known outside of his profession. Few newspaper readers recognize his name when his 1975 Nobel Prize was announced. He has not written best-selling tracts or, or textbooks or articles in popular media, debated policy and ideology on TV, testified before Congress, advised political candidates, public officials or businessmen, addressed large audiences on the lecture circuit or held government office. He has always been a scientist's scientist, a theorist's theorist, an economist's economist always concerned for position and proof. He prefers not to venture into areas where he is personally unsure of logical or empirical foundations. End of quote. Leonid Kantorovich and Charlene Kubmans have both done their most important scientific work in the field of normative economic theory, i.e. the theory of the optimum allocation of resources. At the starting point of their work in this field, Both have studied the problem, fundamental to all economic activity, of how available productive resources can be used to the greatest advantage in the production of goods and services. This field embraces such questions as what goods should be produced, what methods of production should be used, and how much of current production should be consumed, as well as how much should be reserved to create new resources for future production and consumption. As they have formulated the problems and described the connection between production results and productive inputs in new ways, these two scholars have been able to achieve highly significant results. Early in his research, Professor Kantorovich applied the analytical technique of linear programming to demonstrate how economic planning in his country could be improved. Professor Kubmans, for his part, has shown, for instance, that on the basis of certain efficiency criteria, it is possible directly to make important deductions concerning optimum price systems. Both of them, especially Kubmans, have done distinguished work in the field of econometric methods. To sum up, 
Professor Leonid Kantorovich and Jalin Kubmans, largely independent of one another, have renewed, generalized, and developed methods for the analysis of the classical problem of economics as regards the optimum allocation of scarce resources. In other words, they developed theories and mathematical tools to calculate what goods should be produced as well as their quantities. Also, they work allowed to the governments to find the optimum growth rate for an economy. And we know we are affected by those decisions. So, now you can have a better perspective of their importance.